Thank you all for joining us here this evening. We're going to conclude this wonderful chapter of um, teachings of Lord Chaitanya, chapter 18. We'll start with the Kirtan. Thank you. 
So again, thank you all so much for joining us this evening. Um, we are continuing our discussions on the uh, teachings of Lord Chaitanya. And this is a couple of those from Ashwin Prabhupada is based on the biography of Lord Chaitanya Prabhupada called Chaitanya Shraj Gita. Um, this biography is written by Shri Krishna, Kaviraj Shri So we will also face down on the logical argument and disagreement, the chanting of Hare Krishna is the only means for self-realization. And because this transcendental vibration alone can deliver the conditioned soul, it is the essence of the Vedanta Sutra. According to the material conception, there is a difference between a person himself and his name, form, qualities, emotions, and activities. But as far as this transcendental vibration is concerned, there is no such limitation, for it descends from the spiritual world. In the spiritual world, unlike the material world, there is no difference between a person and his name and qualities. Because the Mayavadi philosophers cannot understand this, they cannot utter the transcendental vibration. Lord Chaitanya then told Prakashananda Saraswati that because he had received the order from his spiritual master, he was constantly chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare. As a result of this chanting, the Lord said, I sometimes become very impatient and cannot restrain myself from dancing and laughing or crying and singing. Indeed, I become just like a madman. When I first won wondered whether I had become mad by chanting this, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I approached my spiritual master and informed him that I had gone mad by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thus I asked him, what was my actual position? So we touched on this um, part of the discussion last week. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had um, 
spoken to Prakash Nanda Saraswati about how his spiritual master responded to him by quoting the famous verse from the Brihad Naranya Naradiya Purana, which says, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Eva Kevala, Allah Naskeva, Naskeva, Naskeva Kathiranita. So the power of these holy names is that they are the only means of deliverance in this age. And by their transcendental potency, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who had felt himself transformed, although we know that he was playing the role of a devotee and he was already in um, transcendental ecstasy. But this is describing what happens to um, ordinary um, souls who chant the holy names under the direction of the spiritual master. So we're reading more glorification of uh, the holy names. In the Narada, in the Narada Pancharatra, it is stated, Esho Vedaha Shad Angani Chandamsi Vividaha Sura Sarvam Ashta Sharanta Stam Yashanyad Api Vanayam Sarva Vedanta Sarartha the translation is all Vedic rituals, mantras, and understanding are compressed into the eight words Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Similarly, in the Kali Santarana Upanishad, it is stated Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Iti shoda shikam nam nam kali kamasha nashanam nataha paradaro paiha sarva vereshu drishyade. And the translation is the 16 words Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Are specially meant for counter action of contamination of the same one self of the There are many other wonderful verses and statements on the holy names that we're going to um, read this evening. Uh, they explain a lot of concepts, um, including the order of the, the mantra, uh, the meaning of each word, each pair of words, so that we understand why the, the names of the Lord are arranged like this. There's always a reason for it. Um, why we chant uh, 108. Um, mantras on around and um, we'll also discuss why we chant 16 rounds as a minimum and um, we would also like to thank the Iskwan Jazayatri website and Jirimna Maharaj for providing these references for us and we also thank the Acharyas who so that's really broke them so that we can actually have a better understanding of why we chant the holy names the way we do. So to begin with, we'll quote Srila Prabhupada in the teachings of Lord Kabila, the son of Devaguti, which is chapter 14. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches us that we should only beg God for his service life after life. This is the actual meaning of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. When we are chanting, we are actually addressing God and his energy, Hara. Hara is Krishna's internal potency, Srimati Radharani or Lakshmi, Jai this is Daivi Prakriti, and the devotees take shelter of the Daivi Prakriti, Srimati Radharani. 
Thus, the Vaishnavas worship Radha Krishna, Lakshmi Narayan, and Sita Ram. In the beginning of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we first address the internal energy of Krishna, Hare. Thus, we say, O Radharani, O Hare, O energy of the Lord. When we address someone in this way, he usually says, Yes, what do you want? The answer is, Please engage me in your service. This should be our prayer. We should not say, O oh, energy of the Lord, O oh, Krishna, please give me money. Please give me a beautiful wife. Please give me many followers. Please give me some prestigious position. Please give me the presidency. These are all material hankerings which should be avoided. Then Shri Prabhupada in the Science of Self Realization says The chanting is a spiritual call for the Lord and his energy to give protection to the conditioned soul. This chanting is exactly like the genuine cry of a child for its mother's presence. Mother Hara helps the devotee achieve the Lord Father's grace, and the Lord reveals himself to the devotee who chants this mantra sincerely. Then we quote Srila Prabhupada in the purport of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Leela, chapter 21, verse 144. The vibration of Krishna's flute is always prominent in the ears of the gopis. Naturally, they cannot hear anything else. Constant remembrance of the holy sound of Krishna's flute keeps them enlightened and enlivened, and they do not allow any other sound to enter their ears. Since their attention is fixed on Krishna's flute, they cannot divert their minds to any other subject. In other words, a devotee who has heard the sound of Krishna's flute forgets to talk or hear any other subject. This vibration of Krishna's flute is represented by the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. A serious devotee of the Lord who chants and hears this transcendental vibration becomes so accustomed to it that he cannot divert his attention to any subject matter not related to Krishna's blissful characteristics, paraphernalia. Next, we will read um, from um, the writings of Srila Gopal Guru Goswami. He was um, a disciple of Rakeshwar Pandit, an associate of Lachitani Mahaprabhu, and um, he was also instructed very confidentially by um, Srila Swarup Damodar Goswami and Gopal Guru was actually given his name by Lojitani Mahaprabhu himself. So he's quite a, um, an important authority. Let me read his explanation of the Mahamantra. Okay, so we'll read the English because Sanskrit might be a bit long to the like as well. So he says about the word hare, just as the fire on contacting an object automatically burns it, so the name of Hari takes away, that, that is Harati, Harati takes away, or burns up all the sins of the people with materialistic hearts. It removes Harati, all ignorance, and reveals the transcendental, blissful form of the Lord. Also, Hari means that personality who attracts Harati, the minds of all the people in the universe when they hear stories of his transcendental qualities, or he who attracts the minds of people by his beautiful, youthful form. Hari, in the grammatical form of address, the vocator, or calling out a person, becomes Hare. So these are many meanings of the name of the Lord as Hari. And uh, all those meanings are relevant when we call out to the Lord as Hare, the vocative. But the vocative Hare has another meaning. Hara is Srimati Radharani, Srimati Radhika, daughter of Rishabhanu, who steals Harati, the mind of Hari, Krishna, by her unalloyed love. Hara, in the form of the address, also becomes Hare. And this is when we're referring to Srimati Radharani. And of the name Krishna, he says, the word Krishna is composed of the root Krishi, meaning who, the shelter of all existence, and the word na, meaning nirati, or the form of supreme bliss. Combined, they form the word Krishna, which signifies the Param Brahma, the supreme personality of Godhead with blissful form. And as for the name Rama, 
The Param Brahma is known as Rama because the yogis take great pleasure, Ramante, in meditating on his eternal blissful form. Um, the next verse, the Supreme Lord is called Rama because he carries out pastimes of pleasure with the most beautiful, Sri Radha. Now that he's explained word for word of the Ma Mantra, he now explains how each um, word in the Ma Mantra has a separate meaning. So that means when the whole Ma Mantra is put together of 16 words, each word has its own meaning. So it's not just like a random um, repetition of words. It has actually been put together and it has specific meanings. So the first Hare, and we'll go on like that. So it would be Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. He's explaining. O oh Radha, for the first Hare, please attract my mind and free me from this material world. Then, O oh Krishna, for the first Krishna, please attract my mind. O oh Radha, the second Hare, attract my heart by showing your sweetness. O oh Krishna, the second Krishna, purify my mind by giving knowledge of how to perform worship of you through your pure devotee. O Krishna, the third Krishna, give me steadiness to appreciate your name, qualities, and pastimes. O Krishna, the fourth Krishna, may I develop a taste for serving you. O Radha, the third Radha, third Hare, sorry, please make me qualified for your service. O Radha, the fourth Hare. Please instruct me on how I can serve you. And the same process for explaining um, the second part, Hare Rama and so on. O Radha, let me hear of your intimate pastimes with your beloved. O Rama, let me hear of your intimate pastimes with your beloved. This Rama was referring to Krishna. O Radha, reveal to me your pastimes with your beloved. O Rama, that is Krishna, reveal to me your pastimes with your beloved. O Rama, engage me in remembering your name, form, qualities, and pastimes. O Rama, please make me qualified for your service. O Radha, be pleased with me. O Radha, be pleased with me. Um, now we go on to the meanings of each word of the Mahamantra from different scriptures. Um, Swarupa Siddhanta Vakyam explains the meaning of Hare. Hare is a vocative for both Hari and Hara. The Lord is known as Hari because he takes away the sins and three types of suffering. Adhyatmika, bodily or mental. Adibotic, offered by living entities. And Adidevik, due to supernatural disturbances. Accumulated over millions of births of those who remember him. The Lord is known as Hari because he eradicates the ignorance of his devotees by revealing to them the philosophical truths about himself and his own personal spiritual form which is full of eternity and condensed bliss. Because she steals Krishna's mind and because she is the sonification of Krishna's pleasure potency, Sri Radha is also known by the name Hara. Next, the meaning of the word Krishna from the Mahabharat states, the word Krish is the attractive feature of the Lord's existence and Na means spiritual pleasure. When the verb Krish is added to the affix Na, it becomes Krishna, which indicates the supreme, absolute truth. The dark, lotus-eyed Lord, the only master of the highest joy, who brings pleasure to Gokul and is the son of Nanda, is known as Krishna. Now for the name Rama, from the Ram Tapani Upanishad, states, the yogis take pleasure in the unlimited supreme Lord, who is existence, knowledge, and bliss absolute. Therefore, he is known as the Param Brahman, and is also called Rama. Krishna is also known as Rama because the bliss of the conjugal middle of pure love is the very essence of his being, because he is the tutelary deity of loving sports incarnate, and because he brings pleasure to his eternal consort, Srimati Radharani. Krishna is glorified by the name Rama because he constantly causes the Raja Kalhad women's minds and senses to enjoy the charms of his form and beauty. So now we've heard um, just a sample of the wonderful deep meanings of, um, of all of the, uh, the names of the Lord contained in the Maha Mantra. Um, and Thakur Bhakti Nod, in his Bhajan Rahasya, which we're going to read now, actually gives us um, another wonderful explanation as to how um, each uh, pair of the Maha Mantra is actually 
um, progress in devotional service from the beginning stages. Sambandha, when we're establishing our identity and our identity in relation to the Lord and the identity of the Lord, going all the way to Priyojan, which is the highest stage of pure love of God. The meaning of the first Hare Krishna is that the chanting of the Maha Mantra with faith destroys all ignorance. The meaning of the second Hare Krishna is that all of Krishna's potencies are present in the Maha Mantra. One should develop attachment to the process of accepting full shelter of the Maha Mantra and the association of pure devotees. By following this process, all the unwanted things in our heart will be destroyed. Then strong faith will awaken in the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. By the third chant of Krishna, Krishna, please develop the space of enchanting further by taking shelter of the transcendental qualities of the pure devotees. By the fourth chanting of Hare Hare, please cultivate the taste for chanting. This stage marks the manifestation of unmotivated desire to render devotional service to Lord Krishna. By the fifth remembrance of Hare Rama, arises the stage of rendering bhakti with the mood of pure servitude, strong attachment. By the chanting of the sixth Hare Rama, one arouses one's bhava, ecstasy, or emotion for Lord Krishna. He then develops this taste for this material world and strong attachment to surrender everything to Lord Krishna. The seventh chanting of Rama Rama arouses strong attachment to the sweetest feature of the absolute truth and ultimately the desire to take shelter of the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani in the mood of separation. While chanting the final Hare Hare, the sadhaka will achieve the ultimate goal that is Prayojan of rendering pure, loving, devotional service in pastimes of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan in one's original spiritual body in the mood of the gopis during the eight periods of the day. It's a very nice explanation. And Sri Jiva Goswami also gives us the meaning of each of the 16 means in um, his mantra, Maha Mantra, Maha Mantra Artika Deepika. So he says that the first Hare means Krishna steals the minds of everyone, yet Radha steals even his mind by her divine expertise, that she is known as Hara. The first, um, Krishna means he possibly attracts Sri Radha with the sweet word of sweet sound of his flute. Therefore, that Lord of all enchanting qualities is known as Krishna. Then um, the second Hare, I think it's going to be easier if I just um, mention all of the names of the Maha Mantra uh, from 1 to 16. So that way I won't lose track of saying first Hare or the second Hare. So we just said one was Hare, two was Krishna, three is Hare. So this uh, three, the third name, Hare. It has been heard that during the Rasa Leela, though I Radha was stolen by Krishna to be alone with him in a secret forest power. She is therefore known as Hara in this third Hare. The fourth name is Krishna. When Krishna sports with Radha, her golden hue takes on the dark complexion of Krishna's skin. He is thus known as Krishna. The fifth name, Krishna. In order to please Sri Radha, Krishna manifested the most wonderful lake Shamakun in Vrindavan. He then called all the holy rivers to fill it. He is thus known as Krishna, the sixth name Krishna. By her unsurpassed love, Radha charms he who performs wonderful leelas on the banks of the Yamuna. Therefore, those who are sober know him as Krishna. The seventh name is Hare. While in Gopul, Sri Hari, or Krishna, killed a demon known as Arasasura. During that time, Radha cried out to him with great feeling, and by doing so, she stole his mind. She is thus known as Hara. The eighth name, which is Hare, filled with ecstatic love, Radha sometimes sings the glories of Hari's exploits quietly, and sometimes she sings them aloud. Those who are experts in secrets of divine sentiments call her Hara. The ninth name, Hare. Due to the intense love of Sri Radha, Sri Hari becomes so captivated that it is cute falls from his hand. With the desire to enjoy the forest powers of Krishna, Radha steals his food. That goddess is thus famous as Hara. The tenth name, Rama. Krishna, who is expert at embracing, sports with Radha in the forest groves and in the caves of Govardhan. Thus he is known as Rama. The eleventh name, Hare. That most merciful Radha destroys the miseries of her devotees and gives them great happiness every day. Therefore, that goddess is known as Hara. The twelfth name, Rama, 
The minds of the devotees are continuously drowned in an ocean of supreme joy by seeing the beautiful dark form of Krishna. Therefore, he is known by the name Rama. The 13th name, Rama. Radharani is known as Rama because she enjoys loving pastimes with Achyutra Krishna in the secret forest pavilion. Since he is always by her side, he is known as Rama. The 14th name, Rama. When the residents of Gokul were crying, Due to fear of the forest fire, Krishna immediately swallowed it and gave his devotees great joy. In this way, he is known as Rama. The 15th name, um, Hare. Sri Krishna went to Mathura Puri in order to destroy the demons. However, due to being captivated by the love of Radha, he later returned. Therefore, she is known as Hara. And the 16th name, Hare. When the son of Maharaj Nanda returned to Raja, he took away all the sufferings. He took away the sufferings of all the Rajabasi. By his wonderful exploits, he steals the heart of Sri Radha. Thus, he is known as Hari. So you can see that each name is actually signifying different pastimes of the Lord and referring to his attributes as um, that pastime is place. So there is a lot more uh, meaning to the holy name, like we said, than just an arrangement of, of words. Then a um, very short second meaning given to us by Srila Jiva Goswami is actually the meaning that we most commonly um, attribute to the holy name. Um, he says, there are three holy names that make up the Ma Mantra, Hare Krishna and Rama. Hare is a powerful word that directly addresses the energy of the Lord. Krishna is the name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Krishna is the possessor of every quality in and out of the universe. He also possesses these qualities in an unlimited quantity. And Rama means the reservoir of pleasure. So to sum up, we will read from a class by His Holy Maharaj. And here we will understand why we have 108 mantras. The 16 words, sorry. Of the Ma Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, contain all spiritual truths. Realize devotees have. Realize devotees have actually seen the entire pastimes of Radha and Krishna within that Ma Mantra. Shri Jiva Goswami wrote a poem describing various pastimes of Radha and Krishna that transpire within the course, in the course of the chanting of one round of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Shri Thakur discussed the import of each word of the Maha Mantra and each pair of words, that is Hare Krishna and Krishna Krishna. There are eight pairs of names that combine to make the 16 words, and Thakur Thakur explained how each pair corresponds to one verse of the Shikshashtaka prayer of Lord Chaitanya. Further, he wrote an entire chapter on each verse of the Shikshashtaka. So basically, now we understand that um, Shri Jiva Goswami, in addition to giving us the meaning of each of the names and the pastimes related in each Ma Mantra, but that in the entire round of chanting uh, the Ma Mantra, that is 108 uh, times on the set of beads, there are actually various pastimes of the Lord that occur with each Ma Mantra. So there is nothing that is just random, that is, we just get these names and the number of names randomly. It all has very deep meaning which we realize as we become advanced with Krishna consciousness. So although superficially the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra appears to be a simple combination of three different words arranged in a combination of 16, actually it contains the entire spiritual world. And as we go deeper and deeper in chanting the Maha Mantra, we come closer and closer to entering into the spiritual world and the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. That's what Lord Chaitanya came to give by the intense desire of Sri Advaitacharya, although it appears to be very simple, just an arrangement of 16 words, is actually deeply profound and unlimitedly vast. It is the entire spiritual world in comparison with which the whole material world is just a fraction. Now we will return to, okay, before we return to our readings, we 
PLC. So there's one more thing that people clear up. Now we understand better about um, why we chant a particular arrangement of the Lord's names, um, what those names mean, why we chant 108 times in one round. So why did we chant 16 rounds? So the standard has been mostly given to us by Srila Prabhupada. When his disciples were um, at first discussing their initiation into the chanting, Srila Prabhupada had said that his spiritual master said that if someone chants less than 64 rounds a day, they would be fallen. But to chant 64 rounds a day uh, would probably take the whole day, and so Srila Prabhupada's disciples um, pleaded with him. And he mercifully, um, one can imagine, after uh, getting the mission of the Lord, he mercifully um, reduced the standard to 16 rounds. So this is why we have an Acharya. The Acharya intercedes on our behalf to the Supreme Lord. Only he has that, um, that ability. And so the standard that he sets is the standard that the Lord has set for us. So Shri Prabhupada had said that 16 rounds is the minimum. It, of course, means that we can chant more than 16 rounds if we can. But at least the 16 rounds we must do every day in order for us to um, achieve that uh, that quota for anyone who um, wants to take their commitment uh, to the Holy Name very seriously. Um, we can always chant more, but not less than this. Um, this is uh, this is the Matthew Shri Prabhupada to us. And um, we will discuss a bit more as to why we take this commitment to chant the Holy Names. Lord Chaitanya informed Prakashananda Saraswati that when his spiritual master understood him, he said that it is the transcendental nature of the holy names, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, to transport a man into spiritual madness. Anyone who sincerely chants this holy name is quickly elevated to the platform of love of God and becomes mad after God. This madness arising from the love of God is the highest perfectional stage for a human being. Generally, a human being is interested in religion, economic development, sense gratification, and liberation. The love of God is above all of these. A bona fide spiritual master chants the holy names Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And the transcendental sound vibration enters the ear of the disciple, and if the disciple follows in the footsteps of his spiritual master and chants the holy name with similar respect, this chanting constitutes worship of the transcendental name. So here, of course, we're being advised that we must get or receive the holy name from a spiritual master and take initiation into chanting the holy names. Um, the holy names, of course, so are, are very merciful. And we said a few weeks ago that we can chant even if we're not uh, at the level of being a Brahmin and not initiated, and this is true. Um, and we've also just read that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that if anyone sincerely chants the holy name, then they're elevated to the platform of love of God. So why are we also speaking about the importance of getting initiated into the chanting? So um, we have to bear in mind why we need the mercy of the holy names in this age. We are not qualified and we are not sincere. Um, the, the holy names have descended to, uh, to give us access to them like they never did before. But in addition to that, they are purifying us. They're making us qualified. They're making us more sincere. And with the development of good qualities, we will be able to accord the holy names the respect they deserve by um, taking up the processes that the Lord advises us in order to do so. Because holy names are Krishna. And they should be uh, worshipped properly. They should be respected properly in our lives. And um, when we get the qualities, the good qualities through chanting, we realize that this means that we must follow minimum rules and regulations in our lives to purify us, and that we must also follow the example and the instructions of the Lord who also took initiation in order to experience the true benefit of chanting. Because although we will certainly um, gain a lot of benefit from chanting the holy names without initiation, it is through the mercy of the spiritual master that we can get the full benefit of chanting where we have um, a full realization of chanting, where we can actually, um, through the guidance of the spiritual master, actually see these pastimes of Radha and Krishna um, taking place, and we can actually understand that they are within their holy names. So this is um, the importance of big show initiation. Um, when one gets initiation into a mantra, um, through a, an authorized spiritual master, one can actually harness the full power um, of the mantra through the mercy of the teacher.
So we have to give our full commitment to the holy name eventually by taking initiation into it. Um, and by uh, surrendering to Krishna this way, he'll reward us accordingly. If you remember the first chapter four, text 11, um, this is how we reciprocate with the Lord in order to give his full mercy. We can't actually um, expect that we will chant the holy name and then stay as we are. The purpose is that we will actually advance closer towards the Lord, realizing him in his names for that initiation is quite necessary. And um, at initiation, of course, we, we promise to chant 16 rounds a day because this has been given by Shri Prabhupada. When the transcendental name is worshipped by the devotee, the name himself spreads his glories within the heart of the devotee. When the devotee is perfectly qualified in chanting the transcendental vibration of the holy name, he is quite fit to become a spiritual master and to deliver all the people of the world. The chanting of the holy name is so powerful that it gradually establishes its supremacy above everything in the world. The devotee who chants it becomes transcendently situated in ecstasy and sometimes laughs, cries, and dances in his ecstasy. Sometimes the unintelligent put hindrances in the path of the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. But one who is situated on the platform of love of Godhead continues to chant the holy name loudly for the benefit of all concerned. As a result, everyone becomes initiated into the chant of the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. By chanting and hearing the holy names of Krishna, a person can remember the forms and qualities of Krishna. So now we conclude this, uh, this chapter. Thank you all so much for your kind attention. Yeah. Are there any questions or comments? Anything that I can clarify? Hare Krishna, dear Mataji. Thank you very much for wonderful Hare class. Krishna, Thank you very much. Um, I have one question. With this explanation about Mahamantra, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, convinced the Mayavadis and uh, converts them to become devotees. Um, so, okay, so we actually we read a lot of references. Um, uh, the Lord's uh, actual discussions uh, um, in full in Chaitanya Charitamrita, but yes, he did. Um, through all his discussions with them, like what we've been speaking about, actually, there'll be a bit more. Um, there's another two, two chapters, I think, that. Um, of the teachings of Lord Chaitanya that will go through more of the Lord's explanations um, to Prakash Nanda Saraswati. But yes, through all this discussion, he was able to convert uh, Prakash Nanda Saraswati and his thousands of followers to uh, Krishna consciousness, to Gaudiya Vaishnava. Is that Thank okay, you, Mataji. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Are there any other questions? Like, Hello, <coughs> Thanks for the next class. Um, yeah. yeah, they say from now come Rupa and Guna. Uh, if one chance without offenses, how long can it take to get to, to Rupa and, and Guna? The, uh, the thing with the holy name is that um, the most important thing is avoiding the offenses to actually, it's, it's, it wouldn't actually be a matter of time um, if we can avoid all the offenses. Um, and the easiest uh, way to start, I would think, through the mercy of um, the teachings of, of our acharyas is to avoid at least the 11th offense. Sri Bhakti Thakur says that the 11th offense, which is to, uh, to chant with without full attention. So basically to be inattentive while chanting. This is the root of all the other offenses. So if we can make that effort to, um, to hear, this is probably the one that's most within our power. It's a bit hard sometimes for us. If you think about the other offenses, sometimes we make offenses to devotees without realizing it. Sometimes you have material desires that are a bit hard to stamp out. But if we can focus our attention on, on hearing, being attentive, 
we'll find that all the other offenses will gradually decrease. And with that, um, with that clearing stage, um, we'll be able to reach it a lot faster. Um, and it won't, I don't think it's a very long time after that that we can actually um, perceive everything else, um, Krishna's form, Krishna's um, uh, qualities, um, because that's a matter of taste. And taste is something that, that you actually, when the offense is clear, it's something that, uh, that immediately starts setting in. Um, I'll double check if there's an exact like, time frame, but not one that I've read off. Um, so I think it's just a matter of clearing out the offenses and we start getting the case for the whole name and everything starts appearing in that form, the qualities, and uh, all Krishna's sweetness. Is that okay, Pam? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there any other questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for the class. Yes, Maharaj, how do we uh, focus on attentively chanting, chanting better? You know, sometimes our mind is going to side, that side, and all the distractions. Um, it's true. Um, I was actually listening to a class today by Kudam Swami, and he was saying that all those distracting thoughts, one of the things that we can actually do is just ignore them. Um, it's, it's something that we we try to do just when we're chanting, but it doesn't generally work because we're not doing it throughout the rest of the day as well. Um, if we don't make something a practice throughout the day, um, it's a bit hard then to just try and suspend it for two hours. So if we make it our practice throughout the day that when these negative thoughts come into our mind that we learn to um, just ignore them, they'll go away. So he gave the example that if you have an uninvited guest, um, and you ignore the guest, they'll go away. If you indulge the guest, then they'll stay. So if we indulge in the unwanted thoughts, um, then it becomes our practice to keep indulging in them. So if you indulge in them for, uh, minus the time that you're sleeping, but if you indulge in them for about, what, 16 or 18 hours, then it's going to be harder for you to then shut them off when you're chanting because your mind is just accustomed to doing that. So it must be our practice throughout the day to ignore these negative thoughts. And the thing is, we sometimes feel justified in indulging in negative thoughts. If somebody gets angry with us, we feel that we have a right, sorry, somebody makes us angry, we feel that we have a right to be upset with them. So then we're going to mull over that for a few hours, maybe longer. Um, if we don't like somebody work or at the temple, then we'll feel like we should criticize them if they do something or they come across they come across their name or whatever. So we indulge ourselves, we actually do. Um, and usually it's from a point of we are feeling that we are right to do this. I am right in the situation, everyone else is wrong. So if we're rather letting these thoughts go, as well as exercising restraint over those thoughts that are just intrusive and uh, maybe just of a sense gratification in nature, like you want to contemplate politics or music or whatever, those are the kind of things that we have to work on. And then when we're chanting, um, we can be a bit um, better at shutting them off because it's something we've been practicing. And with that, of course, that's our awareness of thoughts that we don't have a right to think of. We don't have a right to think negatively of this person, or negative, negatively of that. It's all just the false ego. Then the other techniques that we can use um, is, of course, waking up and chanting in the early morning hours. That's, um, that's always advised because the mode of that time is goodness. And it's much easier when you, uh, your whole self literally situated in a time of goodness, then you can maximize the potency of that goodness to focus better. So that Brahma Mahota time is, starts one and a half hours before sunrise every day. Um, and then what is also good about that time is generally everyone is asleep. So you don't have the distractions of other noises um, to focus on. Um, and distract you and um, you're also going to be less worried that your phone is going to ring or somebody's going to be trying to reach you at that time because our phone is one of the hugest distractions so you have one less thing to think about the biggest thing probably in this day and age to think about so with that all of those external distractions are then it's just a matter of um, finding a good comfortable place um, generally 
bodies to be sitting on the floor, we sit upright, stack upright, that's a good position to be in. And if you can, close your eyes without falling asleep and chant. At least then, um, you know, your vision is also uh, not a distraction. But then some devotees also prefer to focus on a form of the Lord. The important thing is that we also don't get distracted by the vision and we're hearing. Because the point of all of this is to hear. So there's a lot of these techniques. Um, other, um, like Raghunabhata Prabhu, he, he always tells us that we should... Um, just uh you can try um techniques like if you roll your your um beads between your fingers then that's also something that tries to hold your focus to what you're doing and um, even if you are a little bit distracted say on your last mantra don't think about that each mantra is a new mantra don't be worried about what happened before because then that's like taking your attention away each one is an opportunity to focus. So each one is getting your attention and then you move on to the next one and you don't think about the next round, 10 rounds to go once it went. So these are all things that we can do. The mind is very tricky and, um, and well, um, everyone knows their, their own mind best and what will help them best to focus. But these are some of the things that we try to do in order to make sure that our attention is maximized. Um, yeah, that's that's a few techniques. Is that okay, Prabhu? Hare Krishna, Mahi, thank you so much. Are there any other comments or questions? If um, so, we've had quite a nice transcendental week of um spiritual activities of observation. Um, it was appearance day of Srimati Ganga Devi um, from the year of Janu Muni last week Thursday. It was appearance day of Srimati Sita Devi and Srimati Janu Devi on Saturday. The appearance day of um, Srimati Rukmini Devi yesterday. And today is the disappearance day of um, one of our great um, modern day Vaishnavas, uh, His Grace Jayananda Prabhu. And he was a very Wonderful disciple of Srila Prabhupada, who said um, most uh, um, devoted uh, example of devotional service in the first, um, well, in the first days of Krishna consciousness throughout his life, actually. Um, and we commemorate his um, his um, wonderful services for Athiyasha in particular. His pictures, the one that's always in front of the cart below Srila Prabhupada every year. So we offer respectful obeisances to him today, and tomorrow is a much uh, anticipated appearance day of Lord Nasinga Dev. So Lord Nasinga Dev is that um, wonderfully merciful incarnation of Krishna who appears to destroy the demons as well as the demoniac qualities within the hearts of everyone, um, including his devotees. He protects his devotees from all the external dangers as well as the internal dangers that are qualities within us. We pray so much that he will um, destroy those tendencies and keep us safe in his portion of service so that we can achieve your devotional service and the perfection of life. So we are going to um, read the nursing the coverture. It's a very powerful prayer uh, for protection. And uh, this is from the Brahmanda Purana, and it's spoken by Prahlad. Shri Narasimha Kavacha of Prahlaku, Ramanda Puran. Shri Narasimha Kavacha Stotram, Narasimha Kavacha Bakshi, Prahaladi, Nidibambura, Sarvarakshakaram Punyam, Sarvapatravanashanam, Sarvasampakaram Cheva, Sardamakshapatayatam, Yatan Narasimha Vavisham, Yamasma, Susan Mahavi, Sent Vinayam Shrat, Sakaba, Ashwini, Mahabanda, Vidhi, Vashta, Tatu, Pujam, Kovananga, Sarnikus, and Shodam, Sarvisham, Doras, and Yes, 
I shall now recite the Narasimha formerly spoken by Prahlad Maharaj. It is most pious, vanquishes all kinds of impediments and provides one all protection. It bestows upon one all opulences and can give one elevation to the heavenly kind of liberation. One should meditate on Lord Narasimha, Lord of the universe, seated upon a golden throne. His mouth is wide open, he has three eyes, and he is as radiant as the autumn moon. He is embraced by Lakshmi Devi on his left side, and his form is the shelter of all opulences, both material and spiritual. The Lord has four arms, and his limbs are very soft. He is decorated with golden earrings. His chest is resplendent like the lotus flower, and his arms are decorated with jewel-studded ornaments. He is dressed in a spotless yellow garment, which exactly resembles the gold. He is the original cause of existence beyond the mundane sphere for the great demigod headed by Indra. He appears the decked rubies, which are blazingly effulgent. His two feet are very attractive, and he is armed with various weapons, such as conch, disc, etc. Garuda joyfully offers prayers to great reverence. Having seated Lord Narasimha Dev upon the lotus of his heart, one should recite the following mantra. May Lord Narasimha, who protects all the planetary systems, protect my head. Although the Lord is all pervading, hid himself with his pillar, may he protect my speech and his also my activity. May Lord Narasimha, the eyes of the sun and fire, protect my eyes. May Lord Henry Hari, who is pleased by the prayers offered by the best of sages, protect my memory. May he who has the nose of a lion protect my nose. May he whose face is very dear to the goddess of fortune protect my mouth. May Lord Narasimha, who is the knower of all sciences, protect my sense of hate. May he whose face is beautiful as the full moon and who is offered prayers by Prahlad Maharaj protect my face. May Lord Narasimha protect my throat. He is the sustainer of the earth and the performer of unlimited ones like me. May he protect my shoulders. His arms are resplendent, transcendental with. May he protect my shoulders. May the Lord who bestows benedictions upon the demigods protect my hands. May he protect me from all sides. May he who he may he who is achieved by the perfect yogis protect my heart and may Lord Hari protect my dwelling place. May he who ripped apart the chest and the abdomen of the great demon Hiranyaksha protect my waist and may Lord Hari Hari protect my navel. He is offered prayers by Lord Brahma who is sprung from his own navel. 
May he on whose hips rest all the universes protect my hips. May the Lord protect my private parts. He is the knower of all mantras and all mysteries, but he himself is not visible. May he who is the original Cupid protect my thighs. May he who exhibits the human-like form protect my knee. May the remover of the burden of the earth, who appears in a form which is half man and half lion, protect my calves. May the bestower of heavenly opulence protect my feet. He is the supreme controller in the form of a man and lion combined. May the thousand-headed supreme enjoyer protect my body from all sides and in all respects. May that most ferocious personality protect me from the east. May he who is superior to the greatest heroes protect me from the south, which is presided over by Agni. May the supreme Vishnu protect me from the south, and may that person of blazing luster protect me from the southwest. May the Lord of everything protect me from the west. His faces are everywhere, so may he please protect me. So please may he protect me from this direction. May Lord Narasimha protect me from the northwest, which is predominated by Vayu. And may he, in his form, is in itself the supreme ornament, protect me from the north where so my resides. May the all auspicious Lord who bestows, who himself bestows all auspiciousness, protect from the northeast, the direction of the sun god, and may he who is death personified protect me from the fear of the rotation of birth and death in the material world. This Narasimha Kavacha has been ornamented by issuing from the mouth of Prahalad Maharaj. The devotee who reads this becomes freed from all sins. Whatever one desires in this world, he can attain without doubt. One can have wealth, many sons, and long life. He becomes victorious who desires victory, and indeed becomes a conqueror. He wards off the influence of all planets, earthly, heavenly, and everything in between. This is a supreme remedy for the poisonous effects of serpents and scorpions and Brahma Rakshasha ghosts and Yakshas which are far away. One may write this most auspicious prayer on his arm and describe it on the palm leaf and attach it to his wrist and all his activities will, be, will become perfect. One who regularly chants this prayer, whether one who writes daily, he becomes victorious, whether among demigods, demons, or human beings. One who with purified heart recites this prayer 32,000 times Contains the most auspicious of all auspicious things and material enjoyment and liberation already is to be available to such a person. This Kavacha mantra is the king of all mantras. One attains by it, which what would be attained by anointing oneself with ashes and chanting all other mantras. Having marked one's body with Dila, taking Achaman of water and reciting this mantra three times, one will find that the fear of all inauspicious planets is removed. A person who chants this, who recites this mantra, meditates upon Lord Narasimha has all of his diseases vanquished, including those of the abdomen. Lord Narasimha roars loudly and causes others to roar. With his multitude of arms, he tears the demons asunder and kills them in his way. He is always seeking out and tormenting the demonic descendants of Titi, both on this planet and in the higher planets, and he throws them down and scatters them. He cries with great anger as he destroys the demons all directions, yet with his unlimited hands, he sustains, protects, and nourishes cosmic manifestation. I offer my respectful obeisances to the Lord who has assumed the form of a transcendental vial. Thus ends the Nirsana Kavacha as it is described by Prahalad Maharaj in the Brahmatic Purana. Shri Shri Lakshmi Singhle Bhagavan Ki Jai, Prahalad Maharaj Ki Jai, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Shri Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Again, thank you so much for joining us in your kind attention. Um, please do enjoy this session tomorrow and open it if you can. Um, and uh, I'll play your heart for the event here and stay. And please join us next week when we have a few more special presentations for Shaitanya for chapter 19. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.